Hey, so this is a video for Harvard CS50 game development course. I'll be presenting my attempt at assignment 0, which is for the game Pong. The lecture walks one through on how to make a two-player version of the game using Love2D, which is based on the language Lua. I'll proceed by first showing the two-player version made in the lecture. By the way, all of this code is available on the website. So all of the graphics, fonts, shapes and sounds in the two-player version are by the CS50 people. Links are in the description. So, you can press enter to serve and the paddle on the left can be controlled by the W and S keys while the paddle on the right is controlled by the arrow keys. Also, as you can see, or rather hear, the collisions do produce sounds. The rules in this game are simple. The player who scores 10 points first wins. Basic Pong. Now for the assignment. It involves making an AI so that one can play Pong single player. And this is what I came up with. First up, I'll show the final game and then I will walk you through the updates that led to this. So here's modified Pong. The user is presented with a menu screen with an 8-bit track in the background. There are three possible modes to choose from. The first one, player vs player, plays exactly like the CS51 described before. The second mode, player vs computer, asks the user to choose the difficulty of the AI. It ranges from easy to hard to, uh, yeah, impossible. No, it's not a challenge, it's literally impossible to beat this mode. Anyway, after that, the user can select this side they want to play on and the controls they wish to use. The player serves by pressing enter, but the AI serves on its own. The user can also watch the AI play against itself by pressing 3. The 10 point rule holds and the computer, of course, always wins. Another feature is that at any point, the user can press the escape key to return to the main menu and reset the game. They can also quit by pressing the escape key at the menu screen. So this is the first update. My idea was to compare the center of the ball and the paddle and decide the AI's motion accordingly. But this led to overshooting which led to this ghostly appearance. You can also see that it still says player 1 and player 2 and the AI has no idea how to solve. And worst of all, the AI is absolutely unbeatable. This is no fun and we need to come up with something better. Second update. The ghostly features are gone. Well, the AI still remains unbeatable. But this time the comparison is between the whole paddle and the ball. So it doesn't overshoot. The third update introduced the menu screen. It takes in the key inputs and acts conditionally. It's mostly structural and a mess at this stage, but at least it can take all the inputs properly. The AI versus AI fight is frozen and both easy and the hard modes are impossible to beat. Uh, instead of focusing on important things, in the fourth update, I just made sure that the AI serves on its own. It serves instantly after losing, which gives it a rather bitter spiteful persona. This was done by setting the game state to play when the AI gets to serve. What's better than one unbeatable AI? Well, two unbeatable AIs playing against each other. So in the fifth update, I got the computer versus computer mode to work. This was achieved by implementing the same AI functionality on both the paddles. The sixth update involves the introduction of actual difficulty settings and an AI which can be reasonably played against. I really hadn't realized that the instant serving would be a problem up until now, as the losing player gets the serve and the AI was unbeatable till this point. As one will notice, player 1 and player 2 represent sides, that is, left and right. So in the code, player and non-player are assigned on the basis of the side the player chooses. Also, the difficulty is in a sense the reaction time of the AI. When the ball is a certain distance away, the AI reacts. Consequently, the easy mode AI reacts much later. The seventh update was majorly cosmetic. I fixed some text issues here and there, added a background track for the menu screen, and also while selecting options, a sound is played, and if an invalid input is received, an error tone is played. Yeah, so there's my attempt. I'll be putting up the final files, which you can play around with. I've also skipped over some things. So make sure you check the description below. Hope you all are doing well. Stay safe. Bye.